Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and we enjoy it one nibble at a time. One giant radiated nibble of fallout. Yes. Our teeth are going to fall out and then we can use them as bullets. (laughs) Spoiler. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) All right, so today we um, are going to talk about the entire first season of Prime Video's Fallout. Um, long awaited for a lot of people. It was long road for it to be adapted, and it's finally here in a serialized format, which I think is the smart thing for them to do. Before we get into everything, you know those housekeeping things. If you're on YouTube, make sure you um, subscribe, notifications, thumbs up, comment below, podcast. Reviews, subscribe, whatever, all that stuff. You know, you guys got it by now. Patreon, dollar a month, support the show. Keep the mics on. How many of those things have you done? (laughs) (laughs) Every time I say this, I'm just like, "Ah, here we go. But the thing is, is that like, right, we like, what if we have a new listener and they don't know that we have those things? That is true. Hi, new listener. Hi, new listener. Do you love Fallout? Is that why you're joining us today? Well, we hate, no, I'm just kidding. Uh-huh, you're in a rude for awakening. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> so programming reminders coming up mm. this Saturday. We have, we're continuing our X-Men 97 coverage. And then we're also going to be doing something on some dead boy detectives. Netflix's new series. I was like, was that a clue? Cause that was it. No, that was it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think in my head, I was going to try to do a clue and then I cut it and I was like, dead boy detectives. <laughs> We, we're going to have an episode come out when that series drops as well. Yeah. So a lot gonna, of things coming up. Yeah. We're going to review Fallout, talk about all the goodness, talk about all the kookiness. Let's get into it. Heavy, 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 heavy spoilers. Big spoilers. Bomb drop spoilers. The entire first season will be spoiled in this episode. Let us officially take a bite of Fallout, created by Geneva Robertson Dwarrett and Graham Wagner. Based on the video game series of the same name, the Amazon Prime show delves deep into, literally underground, an alternative post-apocalyptic Earth. Vault dweller Lucy sets out on a journey in the above-ground radioactive wasteland to rescue her kidnapped father. There, she meets Brotherhood of Steel Squire Maximus, an undead outlaw, the Ghoul. A game of steal the bacon with a severed head leads Lucy to discovering devastating secrets about both the world and her family. What more could you want? Nothing will ever be the same. (laughs) All right. As we said, spoilers. That plot synopsis was a spoiler, but heavy spoilers going forward. So um, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on season one of Fallout? My thoughts on the season one of Fallout are generally good. (laughs) No, I'm, wow. I'm always drawn to, I love dystopians. I also love a strong female lead. As we all know, this has both of them. I also think they have some really good action in here. Some pretty gnarly, gruesome things happen as well, but they also top it off with just a little whipped cream of humor. Mm. So I think all in all, it is a delightfully enjoyable bite. Yeah, I think it does a really good job of balancing that brutal nature of the apocalypse and even 200 years after the whole world went to shit and also making it like kooky. Mm. It's the thing that is signature with this property. Mm. I'm not, I didn't, okay, here's a confession time. I have played Fallout. I've played a few of them. I have not finished any of them. Mm -hmm. I've played enough of them. To understand how the world works. Um, but that is one of the things that stuck out. And I was hoping that they would really hit on. And they did. Yeah. Um, because it has that retro futurism. You have to get that. And then you also have to get the soundtrack right. And also this like juxtaposition of like brutal mm-hmm. and wacky. Yeah. And they did it. And I mean, I am one that really doesn't enjoy gore. And I'm not necessarily saying that there's gore in this. But there are, you know, mangled feet. And things that you see not just once you see <laughs> yeah. it a couple of times so there were a couple of things in this that made me turn my head away from the screen uh but i don't think that ruined it for me at all uh one of the things that you mentioned that i really love so much is the retro futurism here uh so much of that sort of anachronistic feel throughout this where it feels like you're set in the 50s and 60s but yet the technology doesn't necessarily belong 
Yeah. You know, it's like the look of the technology looks like it fits, but as far as what it can do, it's light years beyond where we are. It's like what they did in the early like 1900s where they thought what the world would look like in the 2000s and like it is what it actually looks like. Mm-hmm. It's like so this universe is an alternate history right of the US. So after I would say World War 2, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like the world kind of diverged into this other path. So like the nuclear family and everything was like that just kept going from there. And I love that they kept that. It's such a unique thing to do and to set it in the future, even from our time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I just think that it it was so well done. Mm -hmm. You know, I think especially in the vault where uh, Lucy is from, we really see that sort of wholesome looking nuclear family thing throughout her entire life. Yeah, so let's let's talk about Lucy. We're going to go kind of main character by main character, and most of these characters cross paths with some of the other ones. Um, this series was created by some of the creators of Westworld, so you knew that you were going to be in for something that wasn't what it seemed. Mm. And that's kind of the whole thing with Westworld. Lucy, played by the amazing Ella Purnell, mm-hmm. Yellow Jackets fame. I loved her. She... Favorite character up top. I would say there's two. There's the ghoul and um, I was going to call her Ella <laughs> and Lucy or Goosey. They call her the show. I, I laughed every single time. <laughs> you just call calling her Goosey. Fantastic. She knocked it out of the park. She has this really cool ability to, she has this like naivete about her, mm-hmm. but there's the underlying, I know how to handle myself. Yeah. And it's a really interesting way to do a character because she is naive, especially on the surface world and how the world works, mm-hmm. but she can kick ass and she yeah. does it constantly. Yeah. I, th- the, that's one of the things that I loved about Lucy is that she never feels like the damsel in distress, right? She is a person who gets in distress, but can get herself out of them. What's so interesting about this character is that she was, you know, she grew up in the vault. So in the vault, it's all about sort of order and the golden rule is just being kind and doing the right thing all the time. But yet she's also brought up with the thought that our mission in life is to one day repopulate the earth, you know, above ground. And so she has that sense of duty that is so sewn into the fabric of who she is. And so, you know, in the beginning, when we first meet her, She's like, well, it's time for me to marry a stranger that I don't know because we just have to recreate. We have to procreate. And that's about it. So not a big deal. Uh, And and she goes about her life very matter of factly in that way because that's what she's been taught. Yeah. And it's not in a way that like she's been brainwashed. She's doing it for the greater good. Yeah. And, you know, it, it goes back to like, that's how she was raised. And this is what she thinks has to happen. This show does a really good job of layering mysteries on top of each Mm. other. And even when you think you know what it is or where it's going to go, because some of them are, yeah, there's there's something more to this vault. But even those three interlocking vaults, 31, 32, and 33, each one of those has like a mystery. So in it's fun to see how they were able to do these mysteries in her point of view and then also in her brother's point of view, Norm. And it was very, it was great. It was great storytelling. They really made it to where I just wanted to keep knowing what was going to happen next. And I was entertained the whole time. Yeah. With Lucy's vault, I actually, it, it's one of those things where it's like, they, I, I guess the best way to describe their vault is like any time, like when the people with the Raiders came and killed everybody during the wedding and everything, they just painted over all the blood. Yeah. <laughs> like that is a perfect way to like kind of encapsulate what these vaults are about. It's like, yeah. we're just going to put, you know, fresh coat of paint right over that. Yeah. Everything's fine. It's okay, right? We just go on a new day. We do the best (laughs) we can after that. Uh, You know, and and bringing up that part of when the, when everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of 33 is, is killed. This scene is so like bombastically gruesome, but at the same time gives us, and this isn't like right kind of in the beginning of episode one or midway through episode one, that wink, wink, nudge, nudge, right? Where, you know, people's faces are being smashed into a cake <laughs> or, you know, the one character gets a fork in her eye, you know, it's like, and she's fine. It's right. <laughs> and she just wears like a sassy little blue, you know, eye patch over <laughs> yeah. it to match her jumpsuit. But I think that scene in particular really shows how sort of brutal this show is, but yet it doesn't take itself fully 
too seriously. I think the show is very self-aware mm-hmm. of what it's trying to do. And when you have that and you have these creators at the helm doing that, it makes it for it's not bad, but in a good campy way. It's right. like this is purposeful. Oh, okay. I'm going to lean into this and I like what you guys are doing because then it, it, it allows you to kind of relax a little bit while watching this. I mean, some of the stuff is like crazy. Yeah. But to that scene, I think there are some scenes where I wish they would have. It's fast. The show is very fast mm. and there's a lot of things that like happen and we just keep going because there's a lot of story to tell. I do wish they would have sat with some things a little bit, especially with Norm, like finding st- uh, uh, s- finding out stuff about the vault. I wish we kind of would have sat with it a little more because it was so quick. And I think I turned to you at one point and I was like, wait, are those like the people from vault tech frozen in this thing? Like I was just kind of confused at first, but that that's like really my main criticism with the show. Other than that, I mean, I think they did a great job with showing how far they can go, but also like, isn't that fun? Yeah. It's funny though. Cause <laughs> I feel like my main criticism is a little bit of the opposite of yours in other scenes. Whereas I thought that they did some things for too long. Mm -hmm. I think in episodes three and four, it lags a little bit because it's kind of just like Lucy sort of bumping into the ghoul and into uh, Maximus a whole bunch. And they just kind of keep swapping places. So that felt a little drawn out to me. But it's funny. Like, so for that, I wish they tightened it up a little. But a lot of the things in the vault, I wish they let breathe. Mm -hmm. Something about the vault even though it's underground and it feels like so uh, encapsulated and so um, contained, claustrophobic and contained, I want it to be down there more. Yeah. I think those characters were really quirky. Them uncovering the mysteries down there, seeing their way of life down there, that intrigued me. Yeah. And I think it, they did a good job of, you know, this again, there's a lot of mysteries in the show that have to, and I don't want to compare it to Lost, but I feel like it feels like that almost where it's like, there's so much and so many others and there's a character from uh, an actor from lost in this one, but it's like you find out something and then it creates more of a mystery. Mm. And what they did with this is that you don't know everything. By the time the season one ends, there's like 10 mysteries going Agreed. on and yeah. you're fine with all of them mm-hmm. happening, but you're like, wait, we never found out how this happened or where these people are or yeah. how they got there. And you don't realize that until the end and you're like, oh no, they do wait. (laughs) Yeah. They do a really good job of this. I think in, especially with the character of the ghoul, Mm -hmm. right? So we see him where he is now. We know that, you know, the series starts off in the past before the first nuclear bomb is dropped and we see Cooper. Uh, And so we know that it's Cooper and the ghoul are the same person, but we don't know how he has survived 200 years in the future. We don't know what he's doing until the very last episode. We don't know why he's going through all this trouble. And so still, although we now know the reason for his journey, we don't know how he got there or where it's going to lead him. Yeah. Walton Goggins, fantastic. And I love how in in the games, ghouls look more like the other ghouls we saw in the show where they're just like gross, falling apart, white eyes and everything. I like how they gave because it's Walter Commons. Um, Goggins. I like how they gave him more swag. Like he looks like a like a cooler ghoul almost because he's their main character ghoul, right? Mm-hmm. His story was probably the most compelling to me mm. because it sets him up. Even though we start the series with him, for a lot of it, you almost feel like he's the villain in the way. Like he could go either way. But the interesting thing about it is our other two main characters. I would say Maximus and Lucy. You kind of feel like. By the end, maybe they could go either way as well. Mm. So the moral compass in this show, and I think with good apocalyptic media, you can't really tell, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, there are no rules anymore. What are the rules? You ha- you're going to have to do things that you might not like. And I think the goal was a cool example of that because, yeah, he's terrifying. He does things that you might not agree with. But in the end, when you find out, like, I'm just trying to find my family. And it's like, right. <gasps> Oh, oh, sweet baby ghoul. He's a ghoul with a non-beating heart. (laughs) I feel like with with these three main characters, they really are all um, a dichotomy Hmm. in a way, right? So it, you know, and and just you had said something about chaotic, and I almost feel like Lucy is neutral good, Hmm. right? The ghoul is chaotic good, 
and is like, and you know, Maximus is like neutral chaotic or something like, I don't know the, the, you know, whatever they are, but I feel like they all sort of Venn diagram into each other in some way. And, you know, I feel like with Lucy, we are automatically on her side with the ghoul. We're not necessarily on his side, but we get there. And with Maximus, I feel like we're almost never on his side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll get a little more into Maximus. I think we have some things. Let's stay with the ghoul for a minute before we move on. But I agree. I think it is easy to root for Lucy. I think you're supposed to. But I love a complicated villain. And I don't really want to call the ghoul a villain. I don't think he is either. But like, that's the best way I could describe him. Anti-hero? Maybe. Right? He's doing his own thing. Yeah. It's, you know, he, he can, he's immortal. He can do whatever he wants. And he just wants to do this one thing. Yeah. He wants to find his family. <laughs> Let him find his family. And if you think about it, for centuries, he's been looking for his family. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the biggest mysteries is because, you know, we see them. You know, we we see Barb and what she does. We see his, their kid. And it's like a loving family. And you find out that she is part of alt and she's making some of these horrible decisions. But we don't know how they got separated or what happened. Because when we see the bomb drop, it's just him and his kid. Mm-hmm. So, like, did he leave his wife? Is she already in a vault? Right. It's very interesting. And I love, love that story. I'm like, I am very compelled by this story here. Like, give me all that juicy, like, kind of like, are they, will they, won't they? Like, what's going to happen? And, and the interesting thing from, in the transformation of Cooper to the ghoul is that he starts off as like the all American hero. And then he becomes the outlaw. He's pretty much like the real face of vault tech. Yeah. Like he's the one that comes up with the thumbs up and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. He is the pit boy. (laughs) Right. But it's like unbeknownst to him, he's then he's become the face of something that he actually doesn't agree with. Right. But so it's like, how did this fantastically happy, you know, love, lover of life human become this undead outlaw? You know, I think it's, I I obviously don't know. That's the question mark that we still need to answer. I'm very curious to see how they do that. And I hope they do get a season two because I believe they said that now they're going to be shooting in California because they got approved for like tax write-offs and stuff. So it's like, is that like a hint that it's already going to be removed? I was going to say, is it confirmed? I hope so. I hope so. Because I'll watch it. I think by now as well. Yeah. I think by now you guys can tell that we we liked it. Mm -hmm. It's enjoyable. But I think it's one of those things where Howard the ghoul prior to becoming ghoul hearing his wife in that meeting towards the end and finding out that her vision of the best future that they could possibly get for their kid is to wipe out all the competition and make sure that they can control everything that happens and that's you know not for lack of a better term it's like a big bomb to go off in your life to where it's like i thought we were doing this together and like, I don't think he knew his wife was that high up mm-hmm. in vault tech, which is kind of scary. They're yeah. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. You, you, it, it really does paint that picture of you sometimes truly don't know who's in your bed with you. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun. <laughs> you just see me come out with like a pit boy. <laughs> ah, he's got a pit boy. And it's funny because I feel like when she starts wearing the pit boy is when things start getting serious for him. Mm-hmm. Because it just feels so out of character to him about her. Well, because we don't even get that vision of her, right? Until like that technology starts coming around and she really dives into work. Because it seems like, you know, she was working on things and she was so good at it that she rose up. Mm. And so once that switch happens, I do feel like our feelings and the way that they were portraying that character shifted a little bit. Yeah. You know, this Fallout itself, the series and the game is very much like a satirical and a commentary on like these giant corporations literally wanting to run the world, which I do feel like is really funny because it's like, again, we're having this show where it's like, it's on Amazon. Like totally. Well, that's, I was just thinking that right. Amazon who now you can make emergency calls through, they can get the passcode to your garage door to leave packages. There's going to be drones. You You can buy tiny homes on Amazon. Now next it's going to be vaults. (laughs) <laughs> yeah definitely and and it is a little scary and so there i feel like there's even still a mystery there with barb because when she's in that final meeting with the other corporations there's sort of a shadowy figure up above right. them we she looks at him a few yes, times we don't know who that is mm-hmm. so i so 
oh man. So for a first season of a show, right? They gave us enough answers to satisfy us, but left us with enough questions to wanting more. Right. And like, that's, that's great planning, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, oh, now we found out that Barb is the one that like probably made that rule to not allow dogs into the vault and everything. And then she looks up at somebody as if they're the boss and it's like, okay, so now she's trying to please somebody else. And I believe the ghoul had said something about like, there's always somebody that's in charge. He said something like that towards the end. And I feel like that's who we're going to eventually start seeing is like those shadowy figures, the big bad Mm -hmm. before we um, kind of leave the ghoul conversation. How did you feel about his look? I thought that his look, like you said, I think that he did stick out from the rest of the ghouls that we see in the show. I think for the most part, his look was cool. It was very much a, um, like an emaciated muscle suit on top of a skull with no nose. <laughs> it did give me like red skull vibes a little bit and a little bit of like the mask. Yeah. 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 Right? I thought it looked great. You know, even for them having to like take out his nose and almost every shot, I thought it looked good. I liked that You could still tell who the actor was though, because like when you saw him not as the goal in the beginning, I'm like, Oh, I didn't really like, I guess I just didn't put together that it was him. But as soon as I saw his face, I'm like, those are your cheekbones. Yeah. Those, and his teeth, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's Goggins. Yeah. If I've ever seen Goggins, yeah. that's Goggins. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the Brotherhood of Steel. Mm. Knight Titus, wink, Maximus. <laughs> his. Okay. By the end, I liked him. The journey to the end, I was like, not sure how I was supposed to feel about him. And I think that was how they wanted you to feel almost because each one of these characters gives us a different perspective of the world and he really grew up in it. You know, you have the ghoul that centuries growing up in it so he can kind of do whatever he wants, but having this kid that lost his home even after the apocalypse and then having to go through the brotherhood, but still like at the bottom of the barrel and having to like take advantage of opportunities that were presented to him to rise up. It's like, is that a bad thing in this world? I think it's a bad thing because I don't think we should do that right as a society now, but is that wrong in that society? You know what I mean? It's, it's hard to balance. I think because when we have someone like Lucy, who is always doing the right thing for the right thing, and it feels like the ghoul is doing sometimes the wrong thing for the right thing. Whereas Maximus is doing the wrong thing for himself. Right, right. And so I think generally he wants to do the right thing. But I think it's like, how does he, how he's getting there? I think the word that best sums up Maximus is that he's a coward. Mm. And whenever he, he is truly faced with a tough decision, he will take the easy way out to save himself. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of opportunities where... They're like, did you do this? Oh, you killed the leader of the new California Republic, blah, blah, blah. And he's just kind of like, no, okay. Just kind of accepts it. And it's right. like, mm. yeah. And so that's the thing. The journey, his journey was, I really didn't like him. And then I started to like him. And really mainly when he was, he and Lucy were paired up together and they were in vault four and getting to know each other. And he had those really funny scenes where he was eating caviar and oysters and he wanted his cock to explode. Like those are... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for any children in the car. <laughs> this is an explicit podcast. Um, those were my fa- favorite moments with them because it was almost like the two characters of Lucy and Maximus flipped a little bit. Mm-hmm. Where like Maximus got to play a little bit and he got to be naive and just enjoy the luxuries of the vault. And Lucy was just like, this is not good. I'm just running around. Something's <laughs> wrong here. I'm going to level 12. Yeah. I really liked him. And the whole thing of like them talking about sex was so funny to me yeah it was so funny he was like you know sometimes it just gets large and then it like it, it's like a pimple it gets big and it pops and it's like the- <laughs> and she's like no that's supposed to happen and it was, it was, ideally and he's like it's bad <laughs> i'm in the brotherhood of steel it's bad <laughs> um but so in there i started to really like him again uh and then he made some really shitty decisions at the end yeah i mean i think it's one of those it makes you think right i think it's supposed to be uncomfortable I guess because it's like, I wouldn't do that. But then again, I'm not like in that situation. So like, what would I do? 
You know, I am glad, though, that we did find out that he did not put the razors in those boots. Yes. Because that that was like the first moment where I was like, oh, this guy is shitty. That's your best friend. But he kind of accepted the good outcome from that. Right. And just like kept going. Yeah. <laughs> so take it as you will. How did you feel about the uh, power armor? I thought it was really cool. I think that, um, you know, for their power source to be in their back as a design flaw. Uh, but I think video games, right? Totally. <laughs> uh, I, I think though, that it really gave him the anonymity that he needed, uh, and the power that he always wanted. How about you? What did you think? I liked it. I think it looked great. I remember seeing some early set photos of it and I was like, that kind of looks like a toy, mm -hmm. but then in post and everything and adding the stuff, it looks fantastic. I read a interview somewhere where they have like three different types of suits. It's like the one that you see that like moves. There's like a shell one or clamshell. I think they might've said where it like actually opens up and you get into it. Mm. And then the one that he was in, when you would see him walking, it's only half. Oh. So like, it's just his legs <laughs> and then the top, which is <laughs> so funny. He said, I think he had to raise his arms. So that way they didn't drag on the ground because it was so big. That's hilarious. <laughs> but I loved it because it's such an iconic thing mm. for Fallout. Like it's even on the covers and everything. I think they got it right. I think the Brotherhood yeah. of Steel is is an interesting dynamic. Yeah. I was just going to ask, what do you think their deal is? Well, I mean, it's a mix between like the military and religion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like monarchy and everything. So it's like. Fallout is about the factions. Fallout is about what happens to the world when you take everything away and how is it built up, what remains from there and is here now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's interesting to see how some of these groups will kind of morph from other ones or organizations yeah. and what they are. It's, it's very much... Uh, so we learned that Barb and the big corporations are all going to use their vaults for different experiments. Right. Just terrifying. Like human testing without them really even knowing. But I feel like the whole series is really a, a, a commentary, not only on capitalism, but what happens when you break humankind down? How will these groups come back together and what will they create? Is religion a natural thing that we gravitate towards? Is evil something that we naturally gravitate towards? Or is doing good for the sake of good? Or what? having blinders on and just being like, I'm safe and sound. I don't care what's happening. Right. Yeah. So uh, again, it's, it's really interesting thing of looking at three, these three characters. They really give us a lot to say about humanity as a mm -hmm. whole. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why post-apocalyptic apocalypse, whatever is so in right now, but also has always been a thing like sci-fi and all of that zombie stuff is because it really lets us experience humans at like, everything stripped away what are we going to do and we always root for the people that are trying to do the right thing but having to see them make these decisions of like i don't think that's the right thing to do but they're trying to do it for the good reason and they have no other choice mm. it's it's funny it's like i would say we have a few like apocalyptic things happening it's like mad max is coming back with furosa we have the last of us and we have fallout and they're all so different and I like that each one of these can tell a different thing, but kind of feel familiar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think they all have share traits. It just portrayed in a very different way. But I think that's something that we always think about in media, right? Is that where does humanity lead us? What does it mean to be human and how tell we, me who I am? Right. And, <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, is like, you know, you have to wonder, like when, when I watch this show, I really do wonder, like, would I be more like Lucy or would I be more like Maximus, you know? Uh, and then you have to wonder if there are people out there who are like, yeah, I'd be like Barb. <laughs> I destroy the world yeah. to save my family. And, and, you know, who do we see ourselves in, in in these things? And sometimes maybe that's an answer we don't want to share with people. <laughs> no, not at all. I would rather be CX404. I'd rather be the dog because... I just, I have to, I don't know the dog actor's name. Um, unfortunately, I try to look for it. That's the unfortunate thing about watching all of this stuff beforehand. It's like, not everything is released. Yeah. I need an article with it. I love this dog so much. I'm very happy. So what I remember in the games, there was a dog, I believe the dog's name was dog meat, but I'm very happy that this dog is like out of harm's way. We'll just go with wh whoever's trying to get back to his owner and he's good. Yes. Luckily in this, 
world, there are injections that if you get almost mortally wounded, you get a needle and then you're fine. Stem packs. Yeah. So we do see the dog <laughs> get stabbed at one point. Off screen. Off screen. But then comes roaring back to life. Uh, and Thanks to the ghoul. Uh, yes. And I feel like so much in these movies, we really should be looking to the dog on how to act in an apocalypse. Well, I mean, the dog kind of just didn't have much loyalty. He just went with whoever was trying to get to that. <laughs> as long as they got him <laughs> yeah. to his owner's head. Yeah, that's yeah, all they yeah, cared yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, let's talk about the dog and Dr. Wilzig. Yes. A little bit. Who Dr. is Dr. Wilzig won't sing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who is Michael Emerson, um, lost alum. I love that character so much. His character was surprising to me. Mm. Um, I really liked him. I liked that he kept CX and he was like training him on his own and mm-hmm. he like created a little home inside his thing while he worked in cold fusion. Um, but come to find out, it's like He's a good guy. He's like a mole in Vault Tech. Right. Yeah. And he he knew that when all else failed, he had injected that cold fusion into his neck, told Lucy, just get my head to her. That's mm-hmm. all you have to do. <laughs> yeah. Now that's bravery. Seriously, knowing that most likely you're going to die and someone's going to have to chop your head off and you going, well, this is to free mankind from capitalism. My God. But that's like where this like whole thing of like brutal and wacky comes from is that like she does it. Yeah. She's like, well, I have to get my dad back. I have to bring. Okay. Yeah. Just- <laughs> and then as the show progresses, we're just like seeing the head slowly decompose over time. It ends up in the stomach of an abomination. It gets thrown up. It's in a knapsack. It's all over the place. It's hilarious. And I love how like. It's just like an accessory. Like, nobody is grossed out by it. No. They're all just, like, holding it and, like, just whatever yeah. um, with it. It's so funny. So, speaking of abominations, the world itself. Let's talk about the world of Fallout, um, specifically California. <laughs> New California. New California. Shady Pines. What is it? Shady? Shady Sands. There you go. How did you feel about the monsters, mutations, the abominations, the world itself? I think the world itself was really intriguing. You kind of didn't know what was around any corner because it almost feels like anything could be a danger, right? There are ghouls. There are just other humans. There are other humans that eat other humans. There are abominations. And so uh, danger just really, there are murder robots, right? Voiced by Matt Barry, (laughs) which is even better. When I tell you, as soon as I heard his voice, I went, is that Matt Barry? He's, and then he went, New York City. <laughs> did he really? <laughs> no. Oh. no. <laughs> he should Not have. snip, snip. Um, pretty much did do that, though. Yeah. I loved it. I, that's one of the things that I remember of the games is I was more of a Skyrim person. So Bethesda Game Studios is the one that created this, and they're also involved in this. That is one of the things I remember from Fallout is being terrified of places because like the Pip-Boy will also tell you like when radiation is really high so you have to monitor a lot of things it's Mm. an rpg i remember being terrified of cockroaches a lot and the ghouls like there are certain instances in that game and i'm hoping we do see it in this maybe not because this takes place after the game series but where you would it really felt like a zombie game Mm -hmm. because it was just terrifying yeah and then there would be like some joke from a robot and it's like what is happening (laughs) everybody's lost their minds. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. I feel like not only the people, but just the world itself is off center. Everything is wrong. And it's so kooky. it's cuckoo. <laughs> uh, and, and, and I think that it's one of those things where it feels like you can't trust anyone or anything. And so that's what, as a viewer makes it a little like nerve wracking to watch. You never know, you know, if the person that they're talking to is friend or foe, right? The abomination terrifying i believe it's much bigger in the series than in the game um, which one the bear or the no, the abomination water? the the one that's in the water ah. um the mouth the fingers i don't like that it's an axolotl <laughs> yeah it looks like, like a giant axolotl but it's not it's like made of human clumps of parts it is terrifying you know how people don't like the word moist I feel like I don't like the word clumps. Oh, I thought you were going to say axolotl. No, no, I love axolotl. <laughs> That's great. They're silly. Uh, but no, clumps. Ew. Oh, really? Just the way you said it. Clumps of clumps flesh. Of human flesh gathered together and like... <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you think like 
could you be in a vault? Like, would you like? Oh, I would be the best vault. <laughs> I would be so good at being in the vault. You would be like um, Bob's buds and just be like a brain and still be happy. I'd you're be like, like, I'm in a vault. Guys, what are we doing today? I'm, acti- I'm planning the activities. Yeah, no, I would be more than happy in a vault. I mean, come on. Baking, games, friendship, parties, delightful voting. I don't think I could do it. I can, maybe I could do it for a solid like year, maybe a little more, but like, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I could do it. Like it would really depend on the vault that I'm in. Like Lucy's, if it wasn't connected to anybody else and they were perfectly safe, I could probably do it, but it's too risky, man. I don't know. That you think that's more risky than being on the service in the wasteland? Well, I would probably just like perish in a second. Like, (laughs) oh no, I would perish in a second. You'd be an outlaw yeah i'd probably be barb let's be honest (laughs) well again you never know who you're sleeping next to (laughs) um back to the world oh sorry (laughs) sidetracked i thought it looked great i thought it looked just enough apocalyptic without it looking like not apocalyptic well no the thing is is that i feel like so right the the vault is really still in that 50s 60s era right right? but above ground is a full western well it's hard to tell right because it's like completely sandy and yeah just but like that's the vibe that it gives me it it feels they feel very different from each other well i don't think it helps that the ghoul looks like straight from a western either (laughs) he is clint eastwood (laughs) he has a toothpick in his mouth sometimes and he's like a partner the uh, special effects in this fantastic like, there wasn't a moment where I was like, that's fake. You know yeah, what I mean? No, like, I agree. Nothing took me out of it no. at all. If I had to pick one of my favorite scenes, I would have to say the organ harvesting mm. thing with the, ma- the snip snips, um, the ghoul, that whole just like fight scene. Every is just fantastic. Her having to make those decisions of like, let all these people out. I want you to let these people out. And they're even trying to tell her like, you don't want these people out. Yeah. So it's like her again, being naive and trying to do the good thing. It's like, you don't know this world, Lucy. You can't, you can't, but it's just fantastic. I think the fighting, the weapons remind me so much of the game, the way they look, the way they work, shooting teeth, shooting baby doll parts. Oh yeah. Fantastic. I really, really, really love the pit boys. Mm. I loved it's like, it's hilarious because I'm watching going like, oh, I would love something like that. But it's like, I have a Fitbit. You have a you smartwatch. I mean? You yeah. have a smartwatch. So it's like, <laughs> I do have that in a much more compact fashion, but I love how big and But it doesn't it look is. futuristic. No, right? exactly. <laughs> but it's, again, it's the, I loved the designs in this. Yeah. And I know it stems from the video game, but it's this big chunky thing on their wrist. Um, it looks so high tech, but With yet. With the jumpsuits? Yes. Oh. But it's only, the screen is only in like that MS-DOS green and you know, that uh, typical like sci-fi. Yeah. It's like, you guys are so advanced. You can travel at light speeds, but it's just green text. Right. Like (laughs) you could build a giant piece of armor that can fly with jet packs in its hands. It's only eight eight bit. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Yet it can, it can, you know, track things for miles and miles away. It's so great. It's so good. Okay. So let's kind of like some of the lingering questions we have here, right? We have Hank McLean who is Lucy's dad, who I think as it goes on, you can kind of tell like there's something not right with him. Mm -hmm. I did not expect the three interconnected vaults for one of them to just house executives from vault tech. Yeah. Cryogenically stored bodies or whatever. And they can just wake up, I guess, whenever they set the time or whatever. Terrifying and fantastic. Um, He's an asshole. I don't like him. I don't like what they did to her mother. Um, I don't like what he did in the end. But man, fantastic. Yeah. I, so good. I feel like there's... I, I'm interested to see how much more his story is connected to the ghoul's family not being with him anymore. Uh, I feel like Hank had a lot more to do with that than we know. Oh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Kyle McLaughlin. Uh, sci-fi fame. His career is fantastic in yeah. this. Yeah. I, it, I was so happy to see him in this. I have to admit that I did not first experience Kyle McLaughlin in Twin Peaks. I first experienced Kyle McLaughlin in Sex in the City. I thought you were going to say Dune. No. He was in the original Dune. No, in Sex in the City uh, as 
you know, the McDougal, uh, <laughs> spoiler alert, Charlotte's, <laughs> Charlotte's first husband. Um, and so that's how I've always known him. Wow. And then I saw him in Portlandia where he's the mayor of Portland. He is. Yeah. But wasn't he also in Flintstones? Oh, he played the dirty boss that in tried black. to. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. Wait, he's been everywhere. Him and Halle Berry. Um, Halle she Berry was in Flintstones. Was- God, I yeah, need to she rewatch this. Like a sexy secretary or something. Like Ooh, that. yeah. From sexy Stone Age secretary to Catwoman. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's Halle Berry. I think it is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Somebody will correct that's us. That's not a kids' movie, by the way. The no. Flintstones, and that was a movie that my mom brought my friends and I to see as kids for my birthday. I remember our parents putting them on, and we're just like. This movie's about adultery yeah. and also capitalism in the Stone Age. <laughs> everything's about capitalism. <laughs> um, but so, you know, his decisions and him doing everything, it's like, okay, he's in Vault Tech. We're going to know more about that, right? And one of the last scenes we see in season one is him looking to a new town, which I'm going to assume is New Vegas, which is a big... A lot of people in the Fallout universe have, like, wanted that thing to be adapted because mm. it's crazy and insane. So I'm assuming... That we're going to go there in season two. It's going to be really interesting. I'm thinking, I mean, I'm thinking we'll probably get some new characters. Yes. Well, too. we would have to, right? Because we lost quite a few in this one. Yeah. I was a little upset that we wrote, that we um, lost Moldover. Yes. Who I really liked. Who She's fantastic. I thought, um, you know, Sarita Chowdhury, who is in the Sex in the City follow-up series and just like that. <laughs> It all comes, this whole episode is actually about Sex and City, I'm really thinking. Yeah, um, she's fantastic, and she was yeah. so great in this. Um, by the end of it, I was really rooting for her. Like, I don't actually know if they're good, but I'm yeah. like, I want you to be good. Okay, I have a question. Okay. Yeah. So, we know that Maldaver knows who McLean is, mm-hmm. right? So, when she walked into Vault 33 on the day of the wedding... He knew who she was. Yeah. That's why he made the decision he did when he put his daughter in that thing and was like, take them. Because he also knew some of those people were also from yeah. the cryopods or whatever. And like he had to have known that 32 was destroyed. Yeah. He knew everything. They knew all of it. And it's a it's I hope we see more of Norm. I'm very concerned for him. Mm. I want Norm to be safe and sound from Disney Channel fame. Moise Sarias. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Up to now, uh, very surprised by his performance. Not that I like didn't expect him to do good. It's just been so long since I've seen him. I was like, oh my God, he's grown up. Yeah. And he's killing it. He's an adult now. <laughs> yeah. That character was really interesting, who really truly started off as a coward, mm-hmm. uh, but really has come into their own. And I, I'm actually looking forward to seeing when Norm and Lucy come together again. Yeah. I hope they do come back together. <laughs> At I have a point. feeling that they're going to come together and they're going to be so happy to see each other and then he's going to get killed or something like that. No, I don't want them to. I mean, I do feel like it's going to be a while before they see each other. So I feel like we're going to get a lot of the vault stuff from Norm's point of view. Mm. And then Lucy and the ghoul are going after her father. Yeah. And then Maximus is now like an actual knight instead of faking it. And I don't know really where his story leads, but maybe... To find them as well? I am i don't know. I, yeah. His story, I'm not sure where it's going to go. Obviously, the Brotherhood is going to be involved, but I have no idea. My question is, is the Brotherhood going to shut down the power source? No, now they have unlimited power. But that's they've given good. it to everyone, right? Well, that source gave, put the lights on. And they could just easily everyone. take it out. But that's what I mean. Are they going to control it? Are they going to stop it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bad news. A hundred percent. You think that that old freaking friar looking guy that like makes people kiss his hand at everything is going to not have the power for himself? No way. So then I think the question is, will Knight Maximus be a double agent? And if he is, for which side? Mm, I don't trust him. I don't either. I don't know. We'll see. Will his love for Lucy outshine his I do have to say, like, even though I don't agree with his decision to Aaron Warren, fantastic job. He did a fantastic job. Yeah, I really think... That to bring, oh gosh, this character really is so complicated. It's like bringing, I know you, you really didn't like him, <laughs> but I, but I think you're not really supposed to love him, right, right? Right. You're supposed to see him as being very flawed. And I think that there's such an innocence to him. He's a child just feeling scared. 
And so that's how he reacts to everything. And his world also got flipped upside down because he thought that the bombs went off when he was younger. And it's like, no, they destroyed Shandy. Shandy. Shandy Shands. Shady Sands. (laughs) After the apocalypse. It's just, I don't. You know, they need to get the bombs away from these people. That's right. They just keep bombing places when they start to do well and don't need the vaults anymore. So, what do you have a favorite part, favorite character? My favorite character is Lucy. Okay. Favorite scene? Favorite scene, I would... Mm, I, I, it's a very simple scene, and I don't know why it sticks out to me, but it's when Maximus and Lucy are on the opposite side of that bridge from who they later find out are the fiends. Mm. And we see Lucy again battling her nature to want to trust people and see the good in them. Right. And Maximus is standing next to her as proof that not everyone is good through his own actions saying we can't trust them. And he's right. And he's right. And so I feel like this is another... See, the thing for Lucy is that I feel like she's not dumb. I feel like she just isn't wise to the ways of this new world. No, and I think that's like, like she's not, she's naive, but not by her own fault. Right. She was just hidden from everything. Right. So she knows what she knows. Thankfully, by the end of this, seeing her mother in the state that she was, seeing what her father did, it really like put it in perspective that even though your stuff in the vault was all a lie. Mm-hmm. So you can't base your entire being and your beliefs on something that was lied to you yeah. this entire time. I, I also just want to give a quick shout out to the character of Thaddeus played by Johnny Pemberton, <laughs> who I know as Bo from Superstore. Who, yeah. He was hilarious in that. He was really funny in this. We're definitely going to be seeing more of his character as well. And I also want to talk about Chris Parnell uh, as the overseer of Vault 4 with the, with, one with the one eye who called her Goosey. I mean, these are the little gems that exist throughout what this was, dystopian What series. is his character's name in 30 Rock? Uh, Dr. S- uh, Spichemin. But it's spelled like Spaceman. Spaceman. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Leo Spichemin. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> he, as soon as, like, I couldn't really tell who he was at first because that one eye really does change yeah. the face. But as soon as he talked, I was like, it's him. It's SNL alum. Yep. It's him. <laughs> and he did. He really did such a pitch perfect job with yeah, that role. Yeah. I mean, I've already said my favorite moment was the organ harvesting pretty much episode, the whole scene. Fantastic. And I would say the dog CX is top, but I'm not going to put that because that should be everybody's top. But it's Lucy and the ghoul are mm-hmm. tied for me, for yeah. sure. They're just, they knocked it out of the park. I'm excited for them to be paired up. You know, she's British. I didn't. Yeah. Or she has, I believe she's British. Hello, she Gunna. has a British-ish accent. How about that? Yeah. It's called acting. Yeah. <laughs> and she's doing it. <laughs> she did it so well. <laughs> yeah. All right. So final thoughts. Final, final thoughts. Um, big thumbs up. Very entertaining. I want to know what happens next. And I think that's a sign of a fantastic series. Um, completely engrossing. I believed every second of it. I just want to know how it ends. Yeah. Where The Last of Us left me feeling depressed in every episode, this one left me feeling like a little excited. This? Mm. This is like a fun apocalypse. Yeah. Fun apocalypse. Fun apocalypse. Yeah. I'm going to call it a fun apocalypse. Um, it's brutal. And it's like, sometimes I'm like, ooh, that's, that's a lot. Um, but it's so much fun. Yeah. I just want, I want to see more. I want to see the story unfold. I, again, it's like, it feels like a mystery box almost. And I just want, I just want it all. I I want the answers. I'm looking forward to finding out the answers. Let us know what you thought. Leave it down below in the comments, add us on social media, do all that stuff. Did you fall in love with fallout? Do you give it a big, big thumbs up? Smile and a wink. Oh, when he, when you find out why the thumbs up and why he does it, but how he told his kid, he's like, if it's bigger than the thumb. Oh. And, and she's like, is it your thumb or mine? Oh. <laughs> Janie, no. <laughs> anyway, on that note. <laughs> All right. So see you on Saturday with X-Men 97. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.